you were selling eight to 10 deals a day in, in, you know, 2019, 20, 21, 22, slow down a bit. And now it's like three to five deals a day. Um, I, he, Jeremy's being very nice. I okay. would have to ask, uh, you know, my, my team and the staff, but it, we're doing a few a day still. Absolutely. But you have a different model because you aren't, you charge a flat fee to your buyers. Yes, correct. We do. Never since the beginning of this podcast, have we had somebody on that has done as many deals as Spencer Caldwell. Uh. This is going to be, I am pumped. I am so excited for this podcast because you really, in a lot of ways, are my hero in this business. Uh, You're a hero to a lot of the people here in Phoenix. We've done a lot of business together, Um, you and Jeremy, my disposition manager, but you've got an unbelievable strategy and an unbelievable mind for business and wholesaling, and I'm just excited to to use the pickaxe of, of questions to dig in there and find um, you know, how you built this, how, how you have done, by the way, guys, 20,000 deals. All uh, right. I, uh, it's probably right about there somewhere. Yep. 20,000 deals, <laughs> right? This is bananas. I mean, when we talk about the top of the top of the top, we talk about thousand deals, 1500 deals, 6,000 deals. You're at 20,000 <laughs> transactions that you've been a part of. And listen, let's, let's, I'm, I'm going to kind of skip a, a big part of your story and we can go back to it cool. because I want to go at what's working now in your business. But you spent two years bidding at the foreclosure auctions, bidding down at the courthouse steps when everything melted here in Phoenix and probably did 10,000 of those deals through the auction. There, there is a, pro- a majority, I would say, through the auction cleanup. Correct. All right. I don't yeah. want to talk about that. All right. All right. I want to talk about how you transitioned because when there's a lot of foreclosures, there's a lot of opportunity, right? right? And if there's not, if you're, if we're in a traditional market, I mean, we've got like what, maybe 1100 pending pre foreclosures right now right. in Maricopa County. Uh, of those 80% will get loan modifications. Yeah. Probably. 90% will get loan modifications. So you're still doing, you're still bidding at the auction. Yes, we're still there every day. Um, but you, on your Twitter and on email blast outs twice a day, you have a list of all the wholesale properties that you have available to your cash buyer database. And I think then this is just from what Jeremy was telling me, my <laughs> disposition manager. Okay. He was telling me that you were, sell, you were, you were selling eight to 10 deals a day. In, in, you know, 2019, 20, 21, 22, slow down a bit. And now it's like three to five deals a day. Um, I, he, Jeremy's being very nice. I okay. would have to ask, uh, you know, my, my team and the staff, but it, we're doing a few a day still. Absolutely. Right. Correct. But you have a different model because you aren't, you charge a flat fee to your buyers. Yes, correct. We do. And what is that flat fee? It's 1500 bucks. And how big of a cash buyer database do you have? You know, I've been at this for almost 20 years. Right. And so it's, it's I, big, you know, we do, we do a lot of deals. There's, there's no doubt. I mean, are we talking 100,000? Are we talking 10,000? Like some people say that there's big, you know, the bigger, the better. Right. But then other people are, you know, you've got to really understand who your buyers are and what they're looking for, it, or they're not going to really, right. you're it, just going to come it's across under as 10, noise. It might even be under 5,000. It's not, it's not a big, big list. It's just a slow growing, hey, Spencer, get a text or email, add me to your list. I haven't done any type of data mining and have a ginormous big list. So right. no, it's not a big list. So you're not, you're not just scraping for cash buyers or investors in the area on lists of, of deals that have closed and adding them to your list and just sending them stuff? No, not at all. It's just all organically what? built. hundred percent. So is this, and this is interesting because you have an incredible Twitter account, right. which I love and I've sent countless people to your Twitter account. Oh, thank I, you. I truly have. I appreciate it. Because I think it's just so smart. We're, we're, 
the we do a deal or two a week. That's what we do. They're right. bigger deals. Yes, you correct. know what I mean. And um, and that's been our bread and butter. But for people that are looking for more things, I send them I send them to your Twitter page, you. especially real estate agents, because they don't. A lot of them don't even know what off market deals are. Right. And so I think a lot of them have 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 either bid with you at auction or bought some of your deals. Um, but so you're just you're just working off of a list that you bought that that you built bidding at the foreclosure and then right. just transition that once there wasn't deals there yeah exactly so i actually started even pre-foreclosure just working with cash investors from california in the 2004 5 6 7 8 9 built up so that was everyone from california was buying houses so that's where i started in real estate was all the investors right before the the last build up you know 05 forward so it just goes back to then that I've just been building investors that like to buy cash, that like to flip and, and build a portfolio of rentals. So no, no scraping. Got it. So they're all, how did you build it up in the beginning? Um, so my story goes back, uh, I actually had a family member, an uncle that was in the business. Yeah. And uh, he was primarily a property management company and he got a call from a big investor educator from California. And he called him and said, hey, we want to buy houses. And they, they ended up buying, it seems like in that last build-up, a few thousand houses oh my could, gosh. Um, from California. In, in turn, that they managed several of those houses in this build-up, um, you know, 05 to 09 okay. uh, before the foreclosures. And so that's where I started. And I just ran acquisitions and helped people buy houses cash from California and just kept going. And, How and did you find them inventory? Back then, we first started uh, with new builds, and then the new builders in 0405 said no more investors. Right. And so then we did end or assignee. We'd wake up at five o'clock in the morning and uh, print off, uh, you know, 60, 80 uh, listings, and we would handwrite um, offers and fax them over mm -hmm. to the agents. I did that. Yeah. And uh, you, you hope to get one or two back. And uh, so, and then the, you know, the market changed a little bit from end or assignee and the new builders were saying, okay, when we open this new build, we'll let five or 10 investors in. So it just kind of changed back and forth. But I mean, we were faxing offers over to agents in doing end or assignee to pick and, them up. And your uncle built this from being a property manager? Yes, correct. So he was a property manager and just did a great job, had a great service. And he got a call from um, an educator that went up and down the coast uh, to, I believe, colleges and created a database of buyers from California that were coming to Arizona. He would go to colleges? Yeah, he was like an educator and a professional in real estate and would have seminars after hours like in colleges. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's just, he was just an older guy, 70 something years old and just a really good educator and just created a, an amazing uh, buyer pool. And they're buying nationwide, just not from Arizona. Right. And I, was, I felt like I was flying over there almost every weekend to, uh, to uh, go to these seminars with just a picture of a property that was really printed <laughs> off the MLS right. with the price and saying, do you want this house? So it was pretty cool. And, and so from that, did you adopt these buyers over time? Yeah, over time, you know, and oddly those, those buyers that came from California, they're not like a big buyer pool of mine. Most of my buyers are here local in Arizona right. now that have probably been created from the foreclosure days to even after. So buyers come and go. Right. And, um, so, so it's kind of interesting, but hopefully that answered it. Yeah, I, I just don't. So from you were getting these buyers coming in from an educator, but then you're starting to build up your reputation here locally. How did you do that? Because when we look at deals, right, we look at uh, there's three ways to get deals. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can buy them. Right? right, you could do marketing where where property owners are going to call you. They're in some distress situation. They want to sell their property quickly. Right, right? they want to get rid of these properties. Uh, it works, but it's expensive. Right, uh, you've got being proactive, which is what I really preach: is going out there, picking up the phone, calling on ugly houses, knocking on their doors, like right. trying to initiate the conversation by going out and earning these conversations with with us reaching out to them. And then there's the third way, which is by by getting referrals, right. right? This is this is where um, people know that you're the person to go to. You've got an incredible reputation, and they know that if they want to get great deals, they go to you. Right. Well, and so that's how, how did you build up your reputation? 
You know, I, I think it's just really just grinding all day, every day, and just kind of sticking to it. And I've built my business around almost like an instantaneous response. Like if someone's going to text me, I'm going to text them back immediately. And likewise, my email. And it's, it's a personal response for me mm -hmm. and not someone else that, you know, that's a staff member. So I think right. it's just building a system around me and responding quickly and efficiently and hopefully um, creating the, the, the customer experience for the seller and the buyer that someone wants and so just mainly just creating that. Well, I think a key thing there that we talk about often on this podcast is speed to communication. Right. So many people mm -hmm. leave their phones on like unread. Right. You know what I mean? They're not responding to people as quickly. And I think that, you know, you can beat out 99 percent of other wholesalers right. if you just respond quickly. I, I think you're, I think you're right. That, that's a fact. You, Responding quickly in this industry is is everything to su success. I feel like. Yeah, and why? But why not just clone yourself? Why not just? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Have have somebody that will respond um, uh, for you that that has great personality that you can right. train to be able to do that. You know, that's, that's a great question. I, or do you just love it? I love it. <laughs> we're we're young, and, and I love it, and so give me a lot of more years. I, I just enjoy it and I feed off it and I wake up for it and I just, I live it. It's so fun. It's just, it's just fun yeah. for me. So, and I just feel like I've been doing it almost 20 years and I don't, you know, my wife's always like, Hey, when are you going to retire? I'm like, I don't know if I ever will, man. You, sure. get, you get off the saddle like grandpa does and you die, you know? So I, I don't know. I just love it. So, yeah. and, and not to uh, dismiss, I've got great, you know, office staff and people around me that help support my crazy, um, especially a great wife and kids that, that uh, let me, you know, do what I do. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm thankful for all those around me, but I would love to clone one of these days. Sure. And it, it probably will happen one of these days. So talk to me about that. Who's on your staff? You're doing several deals every single we you and i just did a deal today, today. literally <laughs> today yep that's right cool. we just did a deal today which is perfect timing for this podcast um but what, what does your staff look like for your wholesaling business right for the wholesaling business so the cool thing is is i own a, a brokerage a real estate brokerage called gentry real estate and we've got around 200 retail agents and so so naturally we have an office there and so i've got an awesome broker andrew um and I've got an awesome uh, staff member, office manager, Lisa Marie. So she helps with quite a few things. And really my right-hand guy that helps with everything that's almost on every text and email, his name's Connor. Right. And Connor's a family. We know Connor well. Yeah. Connor, uh, he's Connor Bragg. He's a family member. He's my wife's cousin. And he's been with me for two or three years. And, you know, I really picked him up right before COVID hit. And when we're all doing just way too many deals per day during COVID, and it, he's just been a big blessing. And so, um, you know, I've got so many others that uh, I could mention also. I mean, I've got um, a great CFO, Sonny, that's just such a big support. Um, Ashley, who helps with agents in the office. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the staff's just great. Literally, literally, I don't go to lunch. They, they bring in lunch every single day. I, right. just, I, I don't go to lunch. They, 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 uh, they're all just great to me. So I can sit at my desk and work my magic. Love it. And so... Are we just saying it's you and Connor on the wholesaling business in in the office? Yes, and uh, and then you have people that are bidding for you at the auctions. Yes, Matt Matt uh, help, is at the auctions. He he helps me bid. So Matt's been great. I mean, he's been we've been working together. I don't even remember. I mean, it's ten plus years. Yeah. So, yeah. And so everybody's probably just wondering the big question: How does he get his deals then? Right. Yeah, because yeah. you're not going direct to seller. Right. People are other wholesalers, other investors are bringing these deals to you. Now, you do have traditional brokerage, which is fine. Maybe some right. trickle in there. But the bread and butter is really the other wholesalers. It's, right. it's being the, the disposition company for other wholesalers. Right. My bread and butter is youth for the deal right. that we did today. I, I got either a text or an email said, hey, we have this deal available. And everyone knows my system that and, and what we do. And and we just share it with with, you know, not even the world. It's, it's like I said, it's a smaller list mm -hmm. and we put it out there and, and, um, wait for a response to come back. Yep. So that's, we get, we get the deals from the other, the people that are going direct, that are knocking doors and doing flyers. And I don't even really personally even know those systems. And I don't want to, because I love working with people like yourself right. that, that are, have perfected that system. And I've got my system and we just move forward. So 
how does that work? Do you get an e? You just check emails all morning and see what what other people have sent out, and then put wow. it into because you you guys put that into a list in, uh, that you email twice a day right. and you put it on your Twitter. Right. So is that what Connor's doing? Um, and Con- you're, you're Connor is helping. So Connor's on the, e- um, I, I take the back. So I'm on my email and my text. As soon as I get a deal that comes in from the email, it immediately goes to Connor and Jamie mm-hmm. and, uh, Connor immediately puts it to Twitter. Jamie puts it into an email performa. Yep. And, um, I'll start uh, texting, try to get pocket buyers. I'll you know, check similar buyers that have bought maybe a similar zip code yep. that have bought for me in the past and yep. send it to them. So you may, may like this one. So I'm just, we're just constantly on our texts and emails, just staying on top of it. Got it. And is this, I already have relationships with these other wholesalers and I've gotten permission and they know I'm sending this out. Right. Um, yeah. Everyone, like I said, all the wholesalers know that what I do and, um, not, not to say that every once in a while that maybe, uh, someone has been surprised at, at what I've done. So it's easy for me to explain and say, Hey, this is the process. This is what we do. I'd mm-hmm. love to work with you. And here's a system. If you like it, great. If not, no worries. We'll yeah. go on to the next. Yeah. So you do have that conversation. I mean, I feel like I, I get new people sending out deals every single day that I've never, I, I, I have no idea who these people are. And they're your deals? No, no, no. Oh, okay. They're just, they're, they're their just, own deals. Oh, okay. Got it. Or somebody else's deals. But it's like, um, I don't know if they um, got permission to send out that deal. Is it their deal? Right. Is there is there a, an actual process like you have? Right. right. If I see someone that's new that that I got on my email or text, I immediately give them a call or a text back and just say, "Hey, I don't have this name and number on my phone. Can you explain? Can you please tell me your name?" And then I'll have that conversation with them of of my system, what I do. But most of the people that I've worked with, it's like. The core dozen. Yeah. In my life, it seems like there's always the core dozen. It's, there's the, the 12 that, that. that have have been wholesaling for the last mm-hmm. almost 20 years. Mm-hmm. And and likewise, the core dozen of the buyers that have been really buying a, a majority of, of the inventory. So I, I just try to stick with the core dozen every once in a while. There, there might be, uh, you know, people come and go. But for the most part, you've got the core that, that have stay and they're there. A core 12 cash buyers? Um, I would say wholesalers yeah. for sure. Yes. That really stay the, the core, right? Yep. Uh, as far as the cash buyers, um, I could say core, but sometimes you don't hear from them for a couple of months sure. because they, they flip and they're just really, really good buyers. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, I can't, I can't say, hey, there's a core dozen that are buying a majority of my deals. But as far as selling them, yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, I mean, so then I, I, I told you I wanted to, to like get your thoughts on something. Why doesn't, I, I really think the magic to what you did to get really, really good buyers is coming from the fires of the foreclosure auctions, right? right. Because these are buyers that are buying sight unseen, right? They're putting, they're putting the, what is it? 10,000. Uh, uh, down for for earnest deposit for auction correct yes. immediately immediately sight unseen. sight unseen and they have to close within 24 hours correct i mean these are the these are the strongest most professional buyers right ever yeah they know what they're doing and they yeah exactly and and i've kind of uh in a sense just turned a and that auction those auction buyers into wholesale buyers correct right. and so it's the same model it's yeah. the same fee structure. It's the same model. But why not advertise? Why not? Why not go on AM radio and <laughs> and 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 say we'll bid at foreclosure auctions for you. Come on in. We'll find you the best deals. Nobody knows about. They're all off market, right. and we're we're going to give you the best deals. Wouldn't that like double and triple your your buyer base? Yeah, it it probably will. Uh, but. I like my system and I feel like I got the will and I don't want to reinvent it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. I, I don't know. I, I could probably do a better job at that. So you don't need more buyers? No. I mean, it's always good to have more buyers. Right. I'm not saying that I don't need more, but. You don't want to spend the money. To, <laughs> I don't to, know. You don't want to set up a system for bringing in. Right. And, you know, I, I like the system that I have and it's working and yeah. it just, so I, and that system does change slightly over the years, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about it back when I first started. You're getting new builds and then and our signees, and then the market falls, and we're like, okay, what's next? Auctions, okay. Auctions are basically done in, in, in volume, and I've got to continue volume with my structure. So what's next? Wholesale's next, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so, I mean, 
it could change. Yeah. So, so walk me through this. So you see some, some, uh, wholesale deals are sent to you on an email blast or somebody texts you and reaches right. out to you. And then you put it on Twitter. You put it on your, your, um, twice a day emails. Correct. Somebody goes, I want it. Right. And then you reach out. Yep. Exactly. Personally. Personally. And you go, Hey, listen, we want this deal. Right. That's exactly it. What right. if it's already sold? Um, move on next. Got it. It's similar to getting an auction deal. Correct. So, I mean, I just constantly look at my phone since we've been sitting down and talking. Yes. We're at 35 text messages that I need to get to, but I love you. You're getting itchy. I, you're I, getting no, itchy. No, I know. You're like, <laughs> no, I, I love you. So it, it's going to, it'll, but it'll take two hours. What are those texts though? What are um, those texts? They want deals? Yeah. These are, these are deals coming in and asking about deals and follow up for closing. So these are wholesalers texting you and buyers, buyers texting, texting you. you about deals. Correct. About deals that they've already seen or about deals that, um, that they're looking for. Do they um, tell no, you criteria? No, no, deals that they've seen. I, I'm not a big take an order criteria type guy. The, so you don't know their buy box. Right. right. I, I don't, I don't take buy boxes. There's, there's a few select investors that sure. have been with me for, over 10 years that have bought thousands yeah. of deals that, yeah. that I do have a buy box that uh, I immediately send it over to them. But, but for the most part, part I'm not an order taker. And now they're freaking out right now because you haven't responded to them. <laughs> yeah. This is why you don't do interviews. <laughs> we got to catch you on the weekend or something, uh, exactly. right? That's why I, I, I said, hey. Get a full hour out evening of you. After, afternoon, yeah. evening's the best. But. Because of the auctions, right? Yes, auctions. Are, uh, yeah, exactly. That's my lunch take, too. Don't People are like, hey, let's go to lunch. Well, it's in the middle of auction. I'm. Right. I'm not going to miss a deal over auction. Right. So, got it. Yeah. But I really think, I really think that the power of your list came from, um, those buyers that, that really knew how to evaluate a property quickly, right. make the decision on what their buy price is and, and then, you know, tell you what to bid. And then that's just rolled into this business. I don't know anybody else. I mean, you've got Chris Iman, who's done a phenomenal job yes. down at the auctions, right. similar model, exactly. um, has his, has his, um, uh, private money, uh, lending side to that as well, but it's right. done you know, whatever thousands of deals. Oh yeah. Um, and I just look at all these guys that do these high volume and it all came from the auction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a good, it's inter That's an interesting take. And I, I can appreciate that. I think I'm going to start advertising to bid at auction, white label your service, <laughs> bid through you. Right. There you go. And then just build up a, you know, this, this new crop of buyers. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they would be the best. I mean, we have an incredible buyer base, but obviously when you reach out, we know that it's going to get done. We know it's going to go really smooth. Right. So there's often times where Jeremy's like, it's between you and somebody else and he's going to go with you because he knows that it's going to get done. Right. That's I think that's Thank what you. happens with with having a solid reputation and doing so much right. volume all the time. I appreciate that. But you're a deal junkie. I am. I am. I'm always constantly looking. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And, and so, do you ever look? So it's a flat fifteen hundred dollars every time. Um, for the buyer, correct. Right. Um, and what if and, you see a deal, and you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This thing has. Forty thousand dollar meat on the bone. They right. have no idea what they're selling this thing for. You know, unfortunately, I I don't dig in enough into the numbers because you my let your buyers do it. Yes, because I'm giving an instantaneous response. So there's not enough time for me to be, do that. And there there probably should, and there probably be more money in that. But I I like the volume and I like the model, so I just I stick to it. So love and, it. And and um, I do try to get from my sellers. Um, and another 1500. So I try to try to get three and that doesn't always happen because a lot of times that seller has another buyer and it's in between me and the buyer. So of course they're not going to give me 15. So it just kind of depends on uh, where we're at with that Got deal, it. deal and structure. But the most would be three K. Um, yeah. And I can't say that I, we haven't made more on sure. some others because of there, if there's a joint venture or this or that, but, but for the most, how do you, 90%. how do you stay organized? Because these deals aren't, these simple uh, at the trustee auction, you got to close it in 24 hour cash. These are deals that take two weeks or a month to close. There's tenants involved. There's evictions going on. There's, you know, sellers that disappear during the middle of the transaction. Like who handles all of the transaction coordination? I see you, you're, you're in there. You've got your, your hands in the, in the deal, making sure that you get it locked up. But then once you pass it off, what happens? Great question. So uh, my secret to su uh, success is uh, live Google Sheets or Google Live Sheets. Okay. So 
um, I can I can view it, and other staff members can view it. And um, and as far as like the uh, closing, um, it's me and Connor. Yeah. Um, we we answer all the questions, and we we answer it immediately, and and figure it out immediately. It's once again instantaneous response. It's, uh, we try not to lay, let an issue uh, prolong or or wait days for a response. Sure. Like so, mostly Connor and I are are closing them out too, as far right. as the coordination. So is it just like your hair's on fire Monday through Friday and then, I mean, you just, I mean, what would you just do an Ironman or something or a marathon or what would you Iron do? Ironman. Oh my uh, Saturday, gosh. But it's a half, half Ironman. I've done a full before, but just a half. I can't say a, an, an Ironman. It's a half. But right. Still, but still. Still. I mean, batteries come included <laughs> with you. I mean, that's bananas. <laughs> and not only that, but you have, you have 14 other businesses. Yeah. Uh, it, I'm busy. There's no doubt. Uh, but but I love it. I mean, we're we're in Arizona, man. We're in a non-judicial, yep. the best state in the world to transact real estate. Like, it's just a blessing to be you and I to be sitting here at the table and to talk real estate. There's it no is. better state in the world totally to do real agree. estate. So we're just lucky and we're blessed. Yeah. So well, you obviously came from a very wealthy family, right? I mean, you were you were born and raised in in uh, just a silver spoon, right? No, no. You were just uh, you just started working. <laughs> no, no. Recently, no. or no, I was not born into a wealthy family. I was, I was I was a pig farmer, man. We were I was born a pig farmer. My dad's a pig farmer, so yeah. Uh, my dad's always been an entrepreneur, in which I appreciate and love, and sure. so that was definitely in my blood. Yeah. From day one, from him, and and, and I appreciate. It. I'm business partners with him in our family restaurant. Awesome. Um, Caldwell County barbecue. And um, anyway, so no, I was not born wealthy. I'm not a trust fund baby, man. <laughs> You've had to go out. Yeah. That, well, that's, that's probably why, you know, you love the action so much. Yeah. You know I what I mean? Um, that's awesome. And so to wrap this thing up, because uh, you got to get to the now, I assume, 70 text making... messages. No, I don't want you to miss out on any deals here. Um, Somebody just getting started out yes. and, and they're trying to figure out how to uh, build a relationship with a buyer and, and, and be able to really provide service and really, really feel good about, um, you know, helping buyers and investors out there find the right deal for them. Um, what advice would you give? So somebody some of that's the, just starting out and they're, they're talking to their first buyer for the first time and they're trying to figure out how do I provide value to this, this big time investor in town? Right. No, man, I like it. I would first um, be open and willing, which I'm not too often, to meet with them personally sure. and get to know them and their needs um, and stay uh, consistent um, with your communication mm -hmm. and uh, – and also persistent in your actions towards uh, what you're committing to. Yep. And have a baseline of service, and just uh, really tell them I'm the professional. I'm living here. I'm here to help you. You can text me, call me 24/7. I'm at your beck and call. That's it. So yeah, I'm here. Love it. Spencer <laughs> Caldwell. Hey. To be continued. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so it. much. Man, thank I you mean, for having me. I mean, this is the biggest wholesaling audience, um, uh, biggest wholesaling podcast by far. It's not even close. And I think that you've just blown everybody's mind. Oh, you man. You know what I mean? I, I really do. I think that the, this, is, this has been wildly, just, just to be able to, and, and I think about it. I think about your business all the time, and I talk to Jeremy <laughs> about it, and, and just the way that you have, you have created um, a business that, that doesn't have tremendous overhead. You right. don't have tremendous moving parts with different marketing channels. No. And, and yeah, you're crazy nine to five Monday through Friday, but then you've got a life outside of that. You know what right. I mean? And so, um, I think that you've got an incredible harmony in your, in, in, in your world and, uh, and an incredible business. So thank you. I appreciate thank it. You Thanks for, for having me. me. Absolutely. That's it guys. What an incredible podcast. I hope you got so much value out of Spencer there. And if you're interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, it is the Rhino tribe. Go to wholesalinginc.com. That's wholesalinginc.com. Check out what it's all about. And if you're interested and it feels good in your gut, sign up for a call and we look forward to working with you. And that's it. I encourage you all to go out there and talk to people. Till next time. Love you guys. See ya.